fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that man will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. Verse 14, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that man will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities were afflicted. Hallelujah. Their soul abode all manner of fool. And they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that man will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And declare his works. We rejoicing. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. They are so met because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble and he brings them out of their distresses. It comes the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired heaven. Oh, the man will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. He turns a wilderness into a pool of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell that they may establish a city for a dwelling place and sow fields and plant vineyards that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them and they multiply greatly. And he does not let their cattle decrease when they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their families like a flock. The righteous see it and rejoice. And all iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise, we observe these things. And they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Whoever is wise, we observe these things. Whoever
whoever is wise will observe the mercy of God, the greatness of God, the faithfulness of God, the mercy of God. Because when you read this scripture, there are things that are written in this scripture that speaks of our lives, especially today in 21st century church. It's as if each time God blesses us, we, we, become, we become people that even the angels wonder. He gave us a word. He gave us his voice. He gave us his spirit. He anointed us. But we allow our flesh to rule us. Oh. In his mercy, every time we turn to him and cry out to him for mercy, he remember covenant and restore his people. And then after a while, we go again. It's as if we, we've forgotten. And tonight there is a soberness in the atmosphere. The true church tonight is sober. Tonight is the night for us to look inward and look at our lives. In the morning devotion, I woke up this morning with a heart of gratitude that we are to be grateful. That we serve God who is forever merciful, who is kind, who is gracious and forgiving God. And yet it is God who is righteous enough to judge sin. He never covers sin. He will not cover sin. No matter how anointed you are, he will not cover sin. And sadly, when the sin is exposed, it is exposed for you to be delivered. But many also fall because of one man that, one man that fall. When you read the psalm, God bless them, then they will go and do their thing. Then he will allow discipline to come upon the people. Then they will remember who they were, cry to God. And this picture, you found it well, well presented in the book of Judges. Every time Israel had a godly king, had a godly leader. They, they never had a king in the book of Judges. But when God gave them a leader, they will serve God. He will take the hands of the enemy away from them. They will fear him. But after some time, they will return back to their vomit. And God will sell them again to their enemies. And then the enemy will harm them bad and in their suffering and their pain. That's what the psalmist presented to us. Tonight we are going to pray. But you know tonight, this morning, I woke up after the prayer. Every time we have the prayer time, you know, sometimes I go lying a little bit. And as I woke up, I felt in my spirit that the Lord is saying, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. There is a word that the Lord brought out to me today. 7, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, not 8. 2 Chronicles 7, hear me. Okay, hear me. Thank you. If my people who are called by my name, we humble themselves. Let me stop right there. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. What makes God's people to be arrogant, not to want to humble themselves? If my people who are called by my name, if my people who belong to me humble themselves, abase themselves, Oh God, 
This was God speaking to Solomon when he dedicated the temple. Hmm. And pray. I want you to see the condition. I was grieved when I heard this scripture in a way that I've never heard it before. No, tonight, oh, there are many churches praying tonight. Friday night, some are sleeping. 11.30, that's when they will wake up for all night. We are going to pray all night and we are going to bind demons all night. We are going to cut them down. We are going to slice them down. We are going to do all kinds of things. We are going to learn. They must die. Some of us are going to pray that they must die before morning. Some of us are going to pray. When I, when I heard the pastor that took a team for his wife to die and is a pastor. When I heard Christians, prophets, prophets, evangelists, pastors, title, title holders, leave us see we are God and we are no longer his representative. And we pray. And the Lord said to me, this scripture this morning, humble themselves and pray and seek my face. To seek means you search. You have no body else. It is him. Nobody can help you. That's what it means. That word means out of required necessity. Nobody can help you. So it is you and him. Some of us go to that extent. I want you to see yourself as I'm seeing myself. You have to see yourself tonight before we pray this prayer. We pray, we fast, we give time, we give offering, we give up, we do works, works, we do works. These are works. I can humble myself, look so sad and morose and, you know, pray. Pray. I take time out to seek his face. Not with the desire to want to change and seek his face for things. That's what we do. We take time out to seek his face for personal things. We take time out and we who leads you, we lead you with that. Most of our prayer is for God deliver them, God save them, not civil salvation. No, uh, build their business, which is not bad. I mean, it is required. This is said we should bring all our requests. But the area we never, we brush over, that's what he pressed putting on. What led to this? This week, the number of people that are dying all around me. It's not only my cousin that died. Several people died. Even today, the pastor who gave us the car that drove us from airport in Ghana, they called me today. He died yesterday. Less than 24 hours, they took him to the hospital in London, St. Thomas. He died. People dying, dying, dying. I heard yesterday. People died. I had the day before. People died. Every day, every single day, people are dying. So I was saying, God, what is happening? What is the message you are sending to your church? The good people, lovely people, wicked people. And as a matter of fact, it is as if the good ones are going. And in the, in the time of making this, God, what are you saying to us this morning? What's going on? I've not even heard about the pastor that died yesterday. I heard of him this late, this afternoon, this morning. And I heard the Lord say to me, 
It's time for my people to turn from their wicked ways. It's time for my people to turn from their wicked ways. For they are crying out to me, but their heart is not really crying out. It's not really crying out to me. Why do you pray and you hold your brethren in your hand? How do you pray for those of you who are listening online? Oh, tonight we will bind. We we'll keep, we'll keep binding these demons and they keep coming at us. We're doing deliverance and we are shouting on, on souls, casting demons out, and the demons are looking at our faces. We will pray like this. And I'm not just addressing, because I'm mindful that we are online. I am not just speaking to Hotrick. I'm speaking generally tonight now. I'm not just addressing now. This is beyond Hotrick. As you know, I'm not just responsible for Hotrick. Hotrick is my primary assignment, but I'm not just ministering to Hotrick. Too much, too much wickedness in the heart. We lift up holy hands, but the heart is not lifting up to God. We are, we are, we are, oh God. He said, when you turn, turn my hands, oh Lord, like rivers of water. Turn my hands, oh Lord, by your hand. Till my whole life flows in the river of your presence. And my name bring honors to the land. You know, one of the things I want us to, and we're going to start to pray tonight. When you look into the Psalm 107, you should fear God. When we read this book, the holy book, 66 of them, even if you read two of the books, three of the books, from Old Testament to the New Testament, Something should happen to your heart. What makes us to believe that because we pray, because we pray, God must answer. And we are wicked. And standing in the gap tonight, and your own heart and my heart must be placed on the altar tonight. People are dying left, right, center. Who is next? You want to die in your sin? You are a Christian. You are carrying mobile phone. Your wife cannot even touch that phone. Your husband cannot touch that phone. Your children don't know anything about you. Sister, brother. You're praying, but they don't know you. They don't know you. We have become, we have become, we have made ourselves to be victim on social media. We are wicked, but we are writing Christian things, sending it out to everybody. We talk good with lips, lip service. 
but our heart. Our heart. That tonight, I'm not a follower of a man of God and I'm not here to judge him. A man who brought many to the Lord, but he himself refused to walk in the ways of God. What are we doing, beloved? This is not the night again that we buy no demo. It's got nothing to do with demo. It's about you and I tonight. It's about you and I tonight. Enough of this fake, fake life. It is enough. What has this all done? Let me hear Toro voice. What has Jesus done? Is it not better for you to be going to your disco houses? To go to your disco houses? To go to your club houses? Is it not enough? Go to your club houses. Go to your disco houses. Do your smoking. We are praying, we are seeking him, but we are not turning from our wicked ways. <laughs> Abu says some things, it's not even to be mentioned. It's not to be mentioned. We don't care. We destroy each other's character. We don't even cringe. We fear not God any longer. What church do we think we belong to? What church? What church do we think we belong to? What legacy are we leaving our children? If your child goes to university, will that child come back to Jesus when he goes back home? Oh, Father, forgive us. I want us all to come tonight. <laughs> Want us tonight to come. It's not the praying. It's not the second. It is the wickedness that we're standing in the gap for tonight to plead. To plead that his spirit will bring his conviction to our hearts tonight. I have somebody on Saturday. Hear this wickedness of our heart. This man will not go to church. And if he ever go to church, he doesn't believe in it. He doesn't believe that I should pass to nobody. When I talk, his wife will tell me, Pastor, somebody took money of the church and ran away. Somebody married somebody else and ran away. They're wicked. I, they were not dying. No, dying. One Saturday, one Saturday. He was online on Saturday and he was convicted in his spirit. One Saturday, he was convicted. He wasn't living right. He need to repent. Less than Saturday, Sunday, by Monday, his wife went to the bank and sent tithes. He said, I trust Pastor Lola. I'm not in America, I'm in London. I don't take time from people. Never taking time from anybody. Nobody tied to Pastor Lola. Tied to church. I'm not that pastor. I encourage people to tie to their church. So I took the time, put it in hot trick account, but I have a work to do because my assignment now is to make sure I get him in a church where he can be tied into. Yet among you are people who have not even, no, no record of it. It doesn't bother you, it does you, it is, it's never enough. 
That money is not enough. So how can you tithe when the money is not enough? That's why you brought it, the Bible says in Haggai. I let you bring it in and I blow it away. And yet our heart doesn't bother us, does it? It doesn't bother us. It doesn't bother us. It doesn't bother us. It doesn't bother us. We keep malice and we pray. It doesn't bother us. I want us to bow our head. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you tonight, I don't know what God has tomorrow. But if I were you, I will make peace tonight. I will make it right tonight. We have come to the altar tonight. Tonight is not a night of binding and uh, we bind him on. Uh, Lord, deliver. Deliver you from sin first. Deliver you from wickedness first. Deliver us from, from lying, from fraudulent living. Deliver us. From loveless relationship, loveless, deliver us, oh God. I don't know your case, but I want you to present your case to the Lord. What you want to turn from? What do you want to turn from? You struggle. Yes, I know that it is a struggle. What do you want to turn from? Ask God tonight, oh God, help me tonight. I turn to you tonight because of the blood of Jesus. I cannot help myself. Help me, oh God, tonight. In my weakness, oh God, save me tonight. Lord, I don't want to perish. I don't want to miss the call. I don't want to be left behind. Lord, deliver me. I have given so much excuse. I have given so much excuse. I give excuse for everything that you call sin. I give excuse to them. Yes, it runs in my family. Yes, you can leave me alone. That's how I am. I have justified my action. I have given excuse to everything. Lord, tonight, save us, oh God. Father, save me, save us. Let that be your prayer tonight. Deliver me tonight, oh God. I turn to you tonight because of the blood of Jesus. I am tired of being tired. Deliver me, oh God of heaven and earth. I turn to you, oh God. Your one says, if you are, those who are called by your name, if your people call by your name, we are called by your name. We are called by your name. And instead of our life to honor you, instead of our life to glorify you, Oh, Father God, we bring shame. We bring shame, his honor. Oh, God, forgive us. Have mercy on us. Yes, I may not bring this honor, but one man's sin is the sin of everybody. Lord, forgive us tonight. Have mercy on us tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let every heart that is hard, oh God, be soft tonight. Touch every heart, oh God. Lord, there be repentance tonight. Breathe and fresh upon us. Breathe and fresh upon us. Save us from ourselves. Save us, oh God. I plead before you. In the name of Jesus, let our heart, oh God, let our heart, oh God, as we lay it on the altar, let tonight be a night of deliverance. Let tonight be a night of circumcision. Circumcise our heart, oh God. Circumcise our heart, oh God, tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Circumcise our heart, oh God. Circumcise our heart. Circumcise our heart. I want you to pray that prayer. Lord, tonight, circumcise my heart tonight. Circumcise my heart tonight. Circumcise my heart tonight. Circumcise my heart tonight, oh God. Circumcise my heart tonight. Lord, I call upon your God. Circumcise my heart tonight. Circumcise my heart. I don't just want to pray. I don't just want to seek you. But I want you to remove wickedness from me. Remove wickedness from our men. Remove you are the one who can point this wickedness. Lord, tonight, whatever you call wicked is wicked. And tonight, oh God, deliver us from wickedness. Deliver us, oh God, deliver us. 
We live with that mindful of the effect of our action on our brethren. We live as if we are God and yet we are God's children. We live as if the anointing is ours and is not given. Deliver us tonight, oh God. Some of us, we are so used to lying, it has become part of us. We have become liars and we are not born to lie. Some of us, we give us skills for life. And even when you are convinced and you say, no, God knows I have to work in the light of the moment. Oh God, holiness is far from us. Nobody talk of holiness any longer. We are not even into holiness anymore. Righteousness is not even in the equation. Tonight forgive us. Have mercy on us, oh God. Have mercy on us, oh God. We repent before you tonight. We plead before you that we have mercy. Have mercy on us, oh God. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Cleanse us from within. Cleanse us, oh God, from all our filthiness. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And save us, oh God, from self-destruction. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have mercy on us, oh God, tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Turn on the Bible with me to Jeremiah 31. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. My prayer is that God will raise a movement of people that will call sin what it is. Sin is sin. We cannot continue to dwell and delight because we pray. And our heart is far. You, you, you serve in the church. And you're abusing somebody else's. And you don't feel it. You're abusing somebody else's child. You don't feel it. The world woke up today and read about the man of God. Sexual perversion, sexual 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 perversion, rape. And then to the people that we have to want to hold them, no, we have to take another thing. We have to take injunction against them for talking. We talk about law. We Christians, Bible says, don't go to law. Don't use law. law don't use the courts to judge your case. But justice has turned upside down. Everybody is going to lawyer. Everybody is against each other. Why? Because we have failed to judge matter righteously anymore. Something must happen to our heart on this forum. You are my priority on this forum. And anybody that will listen, because it's, I, I could see that it's on YouTube, anybody that will listen to me, because nobody knows the hour of that angel that will knock on the door to take it. When it is your turn, when it is my turn, there's no time for repentance. None of your house or cars. A man died. They, they did the service of song. His limousine, they arranged his limousine to show the world of his wealth. Most of our accounts will be taken over by Her Majesty's service because you did not even put your house in order. Some of you, what you have, your wife doesn't know what you have. Your husband doesn't know. Your children doesn't know. Your husband doesn't know. Okay, even if the husband doesn't know, even your children doesn't know what you have. They don't know what you have. Nobody knows you. 
So when you die, they have to be looking for some things. What can what do we know about him? Who we can do you know? Do you know the address? Do you know what to say? Do you know what to do? And you're a Christian. You are private and secretive. And yet we pray. I, 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 I often ask myself, what is the basis of your prayer? What is what am, what am I praying for? So who am I praying to? Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Oh God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. They shall all know me, the Bible says, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Now, this was written to the nation of Israel. Today, we are God's chosen. We are elect of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We, we hear the voice of God. Turn right, turn left. You hear God. You will, you will tell Pastor Lola, the Lord told me this. You will say, God told me to start ministry. God told me to go forward. God told me to step out. God told me to sit down. God told me to stand up. God told me to do this business. God told me to, 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 to buy this house. God told me to do this. God told me, God told me, God told me. But the question is this. When God is telling you all this, how come God never tell you that the way you treat each other displeases me? We have a new heart, ladies and gentlemen. If you are born again, you have a new heart. It's not going to give you a new one. You have a new heart. You have a new heart. But do you see the problem? I ask for what caused the death. It's not enough to say somebody died. What caused the death of this man? They said it is heart problem. The heart busted. Bleeding and busted. Because 10 years ago, they did a heart bypass for him. All of a sudden, the heart just burst and bled him. And I began to think spiritually also. Some of us, our heart need surgery. And I want you to cry to God tonight. I want you to turn to God tonight. God said he will give, but he has given us through Jesus. But right now, this is not about you. May, you may say, but I'm not, I'm not in that category. Even that again is a sin on its own. If, if right now you are looking like Pharisee, right now, you are looking at Pharisee, you are looking like Pharisee, this is not for me. That is a sin on its own. Because right now, right now, all of us, if we ever live the way God wants us to live, your neighbor who will have heard about Jesus. If our heart is truly right, if there is no impediment in our heart, trust me, your next door neighbor will know Jesus. They will know you follow Jesus. They will know you serve Jesus. They will know you serve Jesus. But we have become so inclusive. We have become so inclusive. We have built this world around ourselves. Nobody can come in. Nobody can ask us the hope that we have in us. I want us to pray this second prayer tonight. You're not going to give me the heart. You have given me the new heart in this new covenant relationship. It is what I've done with the heart that displeases you. 
It is what I have done with my heart. It is what I have done to my heart and with my heart. And so tonight, Father, we plead for cleansing of our hearts tonight. We ask that to cleanse our hearts tonight. Oh, God. Everyone is judging Ravi Zachary tonight. Everybody say, oh, ooh, ooh. But look in the mirror. See your own life. You are not in the level of Brother Ravi Zachary. You are not in the level of one pastor that ran away, one sister that ran away, all kind of people further. But look at yourself. Sometimes when you are being corrected, you have to just, you don't accept correction. It didn't just happen overnight. The Bible says the Spirit will teach you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. But the Holy Spirit is teaching us, but we are not responding because of the state of our heart. I want you to present that heart to the Lord tonight. Again, cleanse my heart. Lord, every ardent area of my heart tonight, Lord, touch my heart, soften my heart, oh God. Touch my heart tonight. Touch my heart tonight. God is not deaf that he cannot save us. He's not deaf. He's not blind that he cannot see our ordeal. But tonight he said, my people must turn from their wicked ways. There is repentance going on right now over the church. That There is repentance going on right now. There is soberness right now. Oh God, there is soberness now in the spirit. Yes, you are summoning us to soberness. Tonight we lay our heart on the altar. Cleanse our heart, oh God. Yes, you have given us a new heart. Yes, Lord, but we have not allowed your word to touch our heart. We have not allowed your word to rule our heart, oh God. Have mercy on us and have mercy, oh God, on your church. Yes, Lord. Yes, have mercy. Cleanse us, oh God. Purify us, oh God. Set our hearts on fire, oh God, tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, set our hearts on fire. Set our hearts on fire. We stand in the gap tonight. We stand in the gap tonight oh God. Oh Lord, on behalf of our brethren, we stand in the gap tonight that in judgment you will remember mercy. In judgment may you remember mercy and set our hearts on fire once again in the mighty name of Jesus. Purify us, oh God, with your purifying fire. As save is purified. So purify us, oh God, as God is purified. Purify us tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Cleanse our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Deliver us, oh God, from little sin, from the little foxes and the little sin that is elevated us. Deliver us tonight, oh God. We come, oh God, on behalf of the church, on behalf of our brethren, on behalf of our families, and we plead before you as you have given us this new heart that you will cleanse our heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to cleanse our heart. We have 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 to cleanse our heart. Forgive our iniquity and not remember our sin no more. Do not pass us by, O oh God. You are moving over the church. You are drawing your saints to yourself. You are calling your church to yourself. That is a holy summon. Tonight is a night of holy summon. Tonight is a night of holy summon. Have mercy. Have mercy. May we hear you. May we hear you to draw closer to you. May we hear you to draw closer to you. May we hear you to draw closer to you. May we hear you to draw closer to you. May we hear you to draw closer to you, oh God, tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes, we know you will deliver us, oh God. Yes, we know you will not give us over to the wicked. Yes, we know that you have given us authority to tread upon serpent and scorpion. Yes, we know, Father, tonight. Yes, we know. Yes, we know, Lord, but our heart, oh God, cleanse our hearts tonight. 
in Jesus' name. Turn in the Bible with me to Malachi, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter four. Malachi chapter four. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. That will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out, go out and grow fat like store fed cows. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet on the day that I do this. But to you who fear my name, but to you who fear my name, and many times when you hear things and you ask questions, do they not fear the Lord? When you read Psalm 107, you see how God dealt with his people. When they behave as if he's not God. And sometimes some of the things that we, are, we, we go through in life, and I'm not saying all things that we go through, I said some of the things if your heart is pure, you know when you do something you are not supposed to do. You fear, fear grip you. You quickly want to make peace. You quickly want to do things right. The Bible says those who fear the Lord, those who fear his name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his ways. I want you to pray tonight. Oh my God. This is the month of new things. There's something about our relationship with God, ladies and gentlemen. When you, when you genuinely repent, immediately, there is like the gospel of Mark. Immediately, she carried, he carried the man and followed Jesus. Immediately, there is this immediate response. Son of Tarsus in Acts chapter 8. The Bible says, when Saul of the Acts chapter 9, after his encounter with Christ, Immediately, immediately after his, after Anania prayed for him, immediately, immediately after Anania prayed, the very home, and immediately he went into the synagogue of the Jews and he began to reason with the Jews that Jesus is Messiah. Immediately, we, we are no longer in the category of immediately anymore. We are not in the category of immediately anymore. Procrastination sat on top of us. And he's still sitting on top of us. We are forever. I will do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. We don't. There is no urgency. Oh my God. Jesus. There is no urgency in our spirit any longer. Everyone is getting ready. Jesus, the rapture will happen. Some of us is as if hey, you have been hearing it before. Just like Peter said. Immediately. I want you to pray. Lord, give me the heart that fears you. Give me the heart that trembles at your word. Oh my God. If only you know God. If only you know what God does. If only you know how God judges. Sometimes we are so accustomed to the love of God. Love, 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 love. The righteous hand of love of God compare that same righteous hand to bring about discipline for his children. What kind of a parent would I be if all I love, to, all I show my children is love and they're doing something contrary and I never correct them, I never rebook them, I never scold them. What kind of mother would I be? I refuse to be there because I don't want to cry. Oh, I don't like it when my children cry. If I don't discipline them now to cry now, I will cry later. God is not God to be mom. For 
because whatsoever a man so he will reap is not a cause, it's the word of God. It is the law that cannot change. And tonight, oh God, may we have the heart that fears you. Lord, give us encounter that will cause us to trouble. Give us encounter that will cause our heart to shake. Give us encounter that will cause us to fear you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nobody fears you because we read your word. Nobody fears you because we pray. No, it is experience. It is encounter you take us into. It is revelation that you give to us that causes us to fear you. Isaiah saw you and his heart smote him. Isaiah saw you. His message changed. The fear of you gripped his heart and his message is changed. Lord, tonight we pray. Oh God, that you will give us a heart that fears you. Give us a heart that trembles at your word. Not to delight in reading your word, but to fear the fact that we are not doing what your word says. Help us, oh God, tonight to have the heart that fears you. To have the heart that trembles at your word. Knowing that one day we are going to stand before you. Lord, tonight everyone that is hearing me tonight, give us the heart that trembles. Give us the heart that fears you. Give us the heart of God that says, how can I do this and sin against the Lord? Give us the heart that says, how can I do this wickedness and sin against you? Yes, Pastor Lola is not there. Yes, my husband is not there. Yes, my wife is not there. Yes, my children are not with me. How can I do this wickedness and sin against God? Even when they are dear with me, yes, it is a sin against God before it becomes a sin against my family. Tonight, oh God, give us a heart that fears you. Help us to fear you. Let country be a continuous church where your fear rules. Let country be a continuous assembly where the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Help us, oh God, tonight, not just to be a congregation that loves. Help us to be a congregation that demonstrates love out of the fear of you. Help us to be a congregation that demonstrates the fear of you. In the name of Jesus, help us not to take your name for granted. Help us not to take your word for granted. Help us not to take fellowship for granted. Help us not to take our leadership for granted. Help us, oh God, not to be living in the permissive way, knowing that you are God that is righteous in justice, that you are God who cannot cover sin, that you are God who cannot cover sin. Iniquity is a stench in your presence. Iniquity is a stench to your nose. Sin is a stench in your nose. The word says, oh God, in James chapter 4, 17, anyone who knows good to do and doesn't do it, to him it is a sin. Help us, oh God, tonight to live a life that fears you. When your spirit says to us to do whatever he wants us to do, help us, oh God, out of love and fear of you, that we will respond towards you, that we will respond, oh God, in the name of Jesus. At a time when many are living the way they want to live, just like in the days of the judges, when everyone did what was right in their own eyes, Oh God, as we stand in the gap tonight, help us in this land. Oh God, there are many prayer, prayer meetings going on right now. Everyone is online calling prayer meetings. Oh God, placing demand on heaven, but we never place demand in our heart. And yet tonight, oh God, all over the land, there is soberness. All over the nations, there is soberness. Oh God, tonight, I plead before you, do not pass us by. Give us the heart that fears you. Give us a heart that trembles at your word. And so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. And lastly, turn on the Bible to First Chronicles chapter 4. Hallelujah. Nine eleven. I, I, before we go into this prayer, how many of you sense in the spirit tonight the soberness before the prayer starts? How many of you sense in the spirit that there is a kind of soberness? A kind of, you know, humbleness, uh, humility, and, you know, fear of God. That, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mm. 
Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be with me, and that you will keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. I want you to see that prayer. This is the last thing we're going for. I mean, we have brought ourselves, and I still have this kind of honors and 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 pain. I still have this body. It's only God. I, I, if I, I've been asking, what has Jesus done? What has Jesus done? Now look at what Jabez prayed. The Bible says he was more honoring than his brothers. He was more honorable than his brothers. You would have thought that his prayer would be maybe more to be more honorable. Obviously, that he will be more honorable, that it will be difficult for anybody to attain to his level. This is what we pray in Africa. Somebody send me a prayer list that I should be praying for my children. I have to tell the person that, do I look foolish? That you will, you will send me this prayer point for my children? One of the prayer points, nobody will attain the height of my children in life. I am, uh, even that thought is evil. It's not scriptural. That is the kind of prayer on this your prayer book, pray, prayer thing that they do in Africa. Nobody. And, and, and everybody in such a forum, they too, they'll be praying. They will put their hand on their head like this. Oh God. Okay now, please. If all of you are praying that type of prayer, all of us online tonight, if you are praying, if I say, okay, let us pray, put your two hands on your head, make sure your wig stands still, put your two hands on your head, nobody, no child, you are praying that prayer, the next person is praying it, everybody is praying that prayer, excuse me, which one will God answer? So, which means one child will have to be a dollar for the rest of her life for your child to be at that level. And people are sending the prayer around. All kind of prayer lists. So, if your child now is not rising academically, you will say, ah, it is somebody that is doing my child. God is not answering my prayer. Then you will start again. God, all the enemy of my child. When I saw all the prayer points, I said, who bewitch all of you like this? Jabez did not pray for more honor. He looked at his life. Now, let me say this to you. Before you start to pray, please, we have gone past foolishness. People are dropping dead left, right, center. Pray constructively. Look inside your life and see what is not to be there that is there, like a rock or like this that refused to move. And commit that to God. Jabez said, Oh, that you will bless me. Indeed. Now, when you read the word he did, which means what he had before, there's a level. Enlarge my territory. Influence. He's talking about influence.
that your hand will be with me. Because this man identifies something. In fact, maybe it is because of that name Jabez that may be more notable. Because everybody knows what it means. If they call you son of sorrow, uh -uh, you are honorable now. Anywhere you go to, they will give you seat because nobody wants to sit with you because you bring sorrow. I mean, let's face it. We'll be honorable. There are certain names that when they call you, anywhere you go to like this, you will be a standout person in that environment because of that name. There are certain names I don't want to mention if you're in prayer time. In my language, when they, that's why some people are changing their names. And that you will keep me from evil. I wonder why Jabez prayed that prayer. I wonder, maybe he looked at his life and he thought evil, is, evil has been with me too long. And look at the last one, that I may not cause pain. Why pain? Because his mother gave birth to him in pain. What a reminder. Even the fact that the mother is calling him Jabez is a reminder of the mother story that led to the birth of Jabez. And God's granted him. So God granted him what he requested. What is your own request tonight? This is the last prayer. Now before you present your request before God, everybody online tonight, please. And my, my promotion at work, when they promote you, what are you going, what are you taking to that office? That is not what, we are not here tonight for promotion because promotion is from God. We are not here for that. Please excuse me. We've had enough of that. We've had enough of that mess. See how many of us preachers, God has lifted his name in our life, given us honor, and we are bringing shame to the kingdom. We're dishonoring him. So much secrets. His cut is up and is bringing all the dirt out in the public because when we did the same, we did it in the secret and we have enough money, which was given to us by Titan offering, so which was given to us by, by, by partnership. People are giving us gifts and we are using it to get solicitor to place embargo on those who wants to complain justfully that you touch the chest, you touch the stomach, you, do, you did something to me that is not right. But we took a court. We went to the court. We have to go to court. We have to go to court. We have to get attorney to defend our case. Everything is secret. 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 My children are no longer saved. I have to. My, my children, they are adults. Adult children. I have to make sure I walk so closely with people that they can trust. I have to make sure as your, as your children can trust Pastor Lola, my children must trust you. That's why my son we said you are our family. Because we are paying the price. I am paying the price to make sure that my children can call Hodrick their family. It doesn't just happen cheaply. It's a price I'm paying. You will never see me come to your house alone. I don't invite myself to your house. And if I have the right to. So if I say I'm coming to your house, my comma, no, you won't see me open the door. You will not. You will not see me come to your house alone. So you cannot prepare food for me alone. Never enter your house alone. It's no secret. I don't do anything secret. No, 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 no. You know when I leave my house, where I am, 
I'm going here, I'm going there, I'm holiday. Even to go on holiday, I don't go alone. Can you understand? So I, I live my life as transparent as transparency can be. So that the name of Jesus will not be put into disrepute. So that I will look you in the face and say, I did not do it. Investigate from now to tomorrow. I have, a, I have witnesses to my work. Apart from the Holy Ghost. I don't know. I'm saying this right now. Before you come to ask God, I want to give you a few minutes to think. Because the God who answered Jabez is going to answer you. Think. Don't just rush to ask. Don't just rush to ask what comes into your mind. No, no, no. You have not ruled your mind yet. So don't go to your... Just take your time. Take your time. Take your time. This is Friday night. We are going to do where tomorrow morning. You can sleep anytime. Wake up anytime. It's Saturday unless you are a key worker. You have to go to work. But right now, right now, right now, Jabez was constructive in his request. You want, you want to marry, you marry now. You want to have children, you have children now. And you don't have children, you're believing God. Be constructive. Anna did not say, God, give me a child. He said, if you give me this child, I will give him to you. You don't just talk anyhow before the king. You don't just talk anyhow before God. We've gone past that stage now. All of us must make sure that what we talk to God for, it is a weightier things. These are meaningful things. These are things that we give legacy to our name. These are things that we give legacy. I want to increase in my salary. That's not, I'm so sorry. That's not increasing this. Why, why should they increase your salary? The one he gave you did, what did you use it for? Before you can say, God, I'm due for increase in salary, remember me. The, the one he gave you, what did you use it for? Did you honor him? How many Mephibosheth ate at your table? You're asking God for more money. How many Mephibosheth did you feed? So be constructive. Now you begin to present your request before the Lord as Jabez did, Jehovah tonight, you are the same God. You cannot lie. You said we should call unto you, you will answer. And show us great and mighty things that we do not know. You are God who knows the heart of your people. Even before they speak, you already know what they are going to talk about. And so tonight, as we stand in your holy court, through the blood of Jesus and by the power of your word, you have highly magnified your word above your name. And so tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all the requests presented to you as you answer Jabez, your word says you heard Jabez cry. You heard him and you granted him what he requested for because of the blood of Jesus. Let there be answers to the request of your people. Because of the blood of Jesus tonight, this every request is being presented to you. Your angels are present tonight to ascend and descend with answers. As, you have, as they are requesting tonight, you are the source of every 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 request. You are the source of our life. You are the source of joy. You are the source of hope. You are the source of peace. 
my Lord and my God, there is no barrier before you. There is no emptiness in your vat. You are dead. You are loaded with resources. What are they asking you for that you are not ready to answer? Or you are not even ready to have given them already? Yet you say we should ask. You know their hearts. You know their needs. Oh, Father, tonight, as you answered Jabez, hear an answer tonight. Whatever the request is, hear an answer tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, are you not God because of sin, or because of sin of Israel? And because of sin of Saul, he cried to you. You said you will not answer Saul because of his sin. Oh God, tonight we humble ourselves before you. Our heart turned to you, oh God. And so, Lord, as you have cleansed our heart, hear us tonight. Hear your people tonight. In the name of Jesus, let there be outstanding testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by your word tonight, oh God. You sent forth your word and your word healed. You are God who heals. You are God who delivers. Hear and answer the request of your people as you answer Jabez tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My Father and my God, whatever they are asking you for, we have nobody but you, oh God. Hear and answer in the name of Jesus that we will come back to give you all the glory and all the honor of our lives take the glory over the Pharaoh of our lives. Take honor in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever the request is, may the Lord answer you. May the God of Jacob defend you and send you help from the sanctuary. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God of heavens of the heavens who answers Jabez, answered Jabez, answer you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Lord, the same God who broke the chains of the prison. In Act of Apostles chapter 12, verse 5, broke the chains of the prison. When the church prayed and saw Peter walk free from the prison back to the brethren. Tonight we call upon you, O God. Everyone that is locked up in chains tonight, you are free in the name of Jesus. The chains are broken. Yes, your feet are free to walk freely. Yes, your hands are free to prosper. Yes, Yes, your vision is restored in the name of Jesus. Yes, your ears are open to hear clearly once again in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Father, we bless you tonight. Yes, Lord, we honor you tonight. Father, we believe you, O God, that the fear of you, that is the beginning of wisdom, is already given tonight in the name of Jesus. And we will have an encounter with you. Oh, my God, that we will surely know once again that you are righteous and you are faithful, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you. And I pray, oh, God, for your people tonight, in the name of Jesus. You are God who fertilized Gera. You are God who made resources possible for the saints in Judea in the time of famine. Lord, this is famine time, and we shall not lack anything in the name of Jesus. Isaac and his men did not lack. Oh, my God, Abraham did not lack. Lack. The saints in the New Testament did not lack. Oh my God and my Father, we have never lacked. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed beg for bread. And so tonight I pray, oh God, that no one will lack among us. Hear our prayer, oh God, in increase, increase us, in multiplication, multiply us, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Father, tonight I bless your name forever and ever. And I want to say thank you, including our children that whatever they present to you, that they would testify that you are God who surely answer prayer. And so shall it be. So it is in Jesus' name. And Father, once again, I pray for Brother Austin. I pray for Nana. Oh Lord, I pray for those who are in the hospital. Pastor Sadi, all those who are sick that we've been lifting up to you. We trust you tonight, oh God, for divine intervention. We trust you tonight for healing. We trust you tonight for deliverance in the name of Jesus. And as we have presented this request before you, and for those who are even among us tonight, 
that are sick. We present this request before you. Send your word to bring healing. Send your word to bring deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, your word says, oh God, 11, uh, 11 chapter of Hebrew, verse 35, that we may receive their dead back to life. Oh God, tonight, if the dead were raised back to life by faith, and so by faith tonight, they are not dead by faith. We speak life into their spirit. We speak life into their bodies, their bones and their muscles. We command life. Let there be a turnaround, oh God, in the name of Jesus to their health situation. Father, we believe you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, Father, we want to say thank you tonight. Be thou exalted, oh God. Be thou exalted, oh God. Be thou exalted, oh God. Oh, Father, we pray for divine visitation. Even tonight, oh God, Visit us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cause us to dream of heaven. Help us, O oh God, to see heaven. Open our eyes that we may behold heaven. Oh, the year Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. Tonight, O oh God, I pray that our eyes will be open to see you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Revelation chapter 4. John the beloved was called up to come up. Oh God, and you show him what is to come. And tonight I pray, oh God, also that you will give us an experience of heaven in the name of Jesus, that we will have divine visitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that will separate our work from ordinary to be extraordinary. And so shall it be. We bless you tonight, Father. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen.